OK, so we started with the simplest case. Let's say we have a vector field and you want to work out the flux through an area and that area is perpendicular to the incoming field. That was very easy. Now we've dealt with a more complicated case, which is we've got a vector field coming in and it's going through some area that's at an angle. And that's also fairly easy using the dot product. But now let's deal with a much more complicated case. Let's say we have a vector field coming in and we want to work out the amount of the field of the flux through a curved surface, not a flat surface. So for example, let's say we've got the radiation from the sun and we've got a planet like say Earth. And you want to work out how much radiation is going to hit and be absorbed by the Earth. Now what can we do here? It's a bit tricky because all the different bits of the Earth are at different angles. So the sunlight that's sitting near the poles will be coming in at a very shallow angle, whereas the bit that's near the equator will be coming in at a very steep angle. So how can you do this? Well, there are basically two methods, cheating and doing it using the full mathematics. For this course, we strongly recommend cheating. When at all possible, cheat. But we'll also show you the full method that we won't work it out in detail because that relies on second year maths. So, you've got some curved surface and you want to work out what the flux of radiation or the flux of some other vector field is. Simplest option is to replace your complicated shape with something much simpler which intercepts the same amount of light. In this case, if you think about it, we can replace the Earth with a disk perpendicular to the incoming radiation of the same radius. Because any radiation that goes through the disk will also go on to hit the Earth, and any radiation that misses the disk will also go on to miss the Earth. In this case, we've just got a perpendicular disk whose area is pi r squared, perpendicular to the radiation. So the amount of radiation, the flux hitting the Earth, is just going to be the intensity, mod of the intensity, times the area, which is pi r of the Earth squared. So very easy. Let's look at another example. Let's say you're in some tropical country and you've got radiation coming down from vertically overhead. And you've got a greenhouse, which is shaped like a half a cylinder. How much radiation is going to hit that? Well, once again, it's a bit complicated because the top bit is face on, so a bit of area up here. The amount of radiation going through there will just be area times the incoming radiation intensity. But how about the bits at the side? They're at some funny angle. But once again, you can cheat. You can just draw the base footprint of the um, greenhouse, and any radiation that goes into the greenhouse would also hit that. So the area is just going to be the width times the length. So the flux is just going to be a mod of the intensity times the length times the width. So once again, cheating has worked. But let's look at the more complicated way of doing things. In the case of this greenhouse, what we could do is we could approximate the greenhouse. So the simplest approximation would be just the flat plane at the bottom, but we could approximate it, say, as a triangle. We could treat it as something like this. In that case, we can work out the area of each side of the triangle and work out a normal vector to it and dot product and work out the radiation. It's not going to be a very good approximation, but what we could do is approximate it, say, as the sides at a top and another side on the far side. And that would get us a better approximation. Or you could approximate it using lots of things. So one, two, three, four, and so on. As you get divide the greenhouse into more and more slabs, each of which is smaller, you get a better approximation to the real curved shape. And so your calculation of the flux will get more and more accurate. This should look very familiar, because this is the basic concept of calculus of integration. If you want to work out the area under a curve, you could approximate it 
or you divide up to smaller and smaller bits. And as you divide up to smaller and smaller bits, your approximation gets more accurate to the area. And as the bits go very, very small, that's taking the limit, you get the precise integral. And the same thing applies here. The true flux approximation is that we sum up over all the different slabs. And for each slab, we work out the area of the slab times the dot product of the normal vector and the intensity vector. And if we make the slabs very small, take the limit, that turns into an integral. It's actually drawn something like this. It's a circle over there ind indicates a complete integral over some surface. There's area. Actually, it's the d area, because we're now divided into really small bits, so it's a small bit of area, times the normal vector at that area, times the intensity vector. And that is called a surface integral. And that is the complicated way of working things out. We won't do that in this course, because it involves second year level mathematics. What we will do is just show you it, and you'll come back to it next year. This is useful when you've got curved surfaces. It's also useful if you've got a vector field, which is not uniform. So far, we've always assumed uniform radiation. But let's say, for example, instead of sunlight coming in, we had light from a heat lamp, which is only a short distance above a surface. And let's say you wanted to work out how much radiation from that heat lamp hits a plate. Now, in this case, it's going to be rather complicated because the radiation hitting the center of the plate is going to be coming straight on, whereas that coming in at the, towards the edges is coming at an angle. So what you could do is integrate over the surface. Once again, do the integral dA, normal vector at each point, times the intensity vector. Or once again, you could cheat. What you could say is that any radiation that hits the plate is going into this cone here. And you could ha imagine having a, a radial bowl of the same th radius, but dipped downward so it's always perpendicular to the light, and work out that. So that would be how you'd cheat for this particular situation. You could imagine a really complicated situation where you have a non-uniform vector field, say strong radiation in some directions, weak in others, and some horribly curved and bumpy surface. In that case, there's probably no way to cheat. You just need to do this integral. You need to break the whole surface up into little squares. For each one, work out the normal vector and dot it with the whatever the intensity vector is at that particular place, and then sum that over the entire surface. But we won't do anything like that in this course.